QA community, welcome back everybody. Robert Linkle, trainingtheolderadult.com. I hope you're all doing well. Happy to see you all. It's had a big weekend of travel. I am back and excited uh, to get going here with some new content for you. Just a quick announcement this Saturday, the 23rd, our eccentric course is kicking off. 23rd, we are going to start at 9 a.m. We're going to have a little live introduction and then we release the course and boom, away we go. Very excited for this one. I've worked really, really hard on this course, so I hope you will uh, enjoy it. All right, gang, <clears throat> new article here. I have not seen this website before, The Conversation. Um, I, this might just be something that I haven't paid attention to, or maybe it's new, I don't, I don't know. Um, I, I really liked this article. Search for a... Um, author of it, but this was as much as I could find is that it was somebody in this uh, journal collection here. So anyhow, May 2023, this came out. Am I too old to build muscle? What science says about sarcopenia and building strength later in life? Right away, a term coined in the 1980s, technically that term uh, sarcopenia is a Latin term for um, the deterioration of flesh, basically the, your, your flesh is reducing in size and <clears throat> this will occur as it shows on here decade after decade. We've been using a term called use it or lose it, right? A long time, which is a lot less scary than, you know, <laughs> loss of flesh. So we, we look a little bit more on that use it or lose it term where <clears throat> if you simply do not put your arms over your head to 180 degrees, reaching up towards the ceiling. For about a decade, you'll lose your ability to do that. If you do not crawl around on the floor or squat with your butt to your ankles for about a decade, you'll lose your ability to do that. That's why if you look at uh, kids, you know, in their um, early, you know, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, they're developing coordinations and they can crawl well, they can... Uh, manipulate their body weight well. They get on the monkey bars and they can do the monkey bars really, really well. They can hang for long periods of time. They're practicing all these skills, so they're really good at them. And you think, well, as I get older into my teenage years, I'm only getting stronger. Why am I not maintaining a really good ability to do those skills? Because we stop doing those skills and we start playing soccer and volleyball and football and wrestling and you know whatever else. The sport turns from just general locomotion and mobility and, you know, coordination and gymnast and tumbling, uh, gymnastics and tumbling, it turns from that into more specific sport. Well, in that specific sport, they don't do monkey bars. They don't do bear crawls and they don't do squats, you know, with their butt to their ankles. So what happens by age 15 or 18 or 20, they don't have the ability to do that anymore. So this is my point across any mobility, any strength, any coordination, if you just stop doing it for a little while, you'll lose your ability to do so. But does that mean you can't get it back? No, you can absolutely get it back. Even into your 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and we'll give you an example of a gentleman here who is not just you know some amazing freak genetic individual that became a bodybuilder in his 90s. No, he. this is possible for many, many people to do so. All right, sarcopenia can start to affect people in their 30s. If you are not resistance training, in your 30s, you can start to lose your muscle mass. Your max potential for bone density and for muscle mass, right around 30, 25 to 35, let's call it, okay? That's gonna be your max potential for when your body's hormonal responses and the development of your, um, your body's muscle mass and bone density reach an all-time high. If you've been taking advantage of it, meaning you start to resistance train at 10 or 12 and you know, you're know you living a pretty fit lifestyle right around 25 to 30, you're gonna be in the best shape of your life potentially with the most muscle mass and the most bone density that you can have. After that 30 to 35, it's gonna start to gradually come downhill. But if you keep training, it'll be really, really small amounts. But if you don't train at all, it can be upwards of you know five to 10% per decade is basically how aggressive this can be. Uh, we will start to lose, let's see, for about 30% of older adults over age of 60, the declines are substantial enough to meet the definition of sarcopenia. Sarcopenia is the loss of muscle mass and function. 
There's another term called atrophy. So when you talk about this, people go, you mean atrophy? No, atrophy just means that muscle mass has shrunk. Sarcopenia means muscle mass has shrunk and it shrunk so far that you have lost your ability to do so. Meaning, I can't stand up to six foot three anymore, now I'm six foot one. I can't take a three foot long step anymore, my gait has shrunk to two feet. Uh, I used to be able to walk at um, one gait step per 0.8 seconds. Now it takes me 1.2 seconds to make that step. And it's shorter. So I'm slower, I'm less coordinated, I'm less strong, I'm less stable, I'm smaller. I can't pick up the weight I used to be able to pick up. I can't reach overhead to 180 degrees. I can't get up and down off the floor anymore. These are all loss functions based on you don't have the muscle mass and the coordination and the ability to do so because you haven't practiced it. This is not a natural thing that happens due to aging to everyone, okay? The, 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 the loss of muscle mass, yes, but to the point where you can't function, no. This is your own doing in the sense that you're not practicing and you're not taking care of it, so you're now losing those abilities. Just because you're getting older, it doesn't mean that this is going to happen. That's why there are plenty of 70, 80, and 90-year-olds who still squat great, walk just as fast, just as tall as they did when they were younger. They've taken care of their bodies. They've kept their abilities to do so. Are they at their max potential for bone density? No, but it's way higher than it normally would be for an average person their age. Are they at their max potential for muscle mass? No, but it's way higher for the average person their age. Are they, you get my point, okay? They have maintained and or slowed down that decrease so minimal that they've kept great functionality, great abilities, and that's why they're so high functioning. What does high functioning lead to? Maintenance of independence, which is the number one, if not number two, concern of the aging adult. Usually number one is they're afraid of falling down. Number two is because they fell down, they've now lost their independence. And that is where they don't wanna have someone else have to take care of them. They don't wanna have someone else, you know, they don't wanna be rely, reliable, no. They don't wanna have someone else have to take care of them, right? They wanna maintain their independence. So sarcopenia, we know, as you get weaker, you're gonna become a greater fall risk. Fractures occur when you fall. Hospitalizations occur. The loss of independence then will occur. And then that can even lead into more accelerated chronic disease or um, life-altering, life-ending disease. So <clears throat> many people, as they put on here, in their you know, middle of life will start to have a little moment of like the, the midlife crisis, right? Maybe I should try to get it back. Let's, let's get back into the weight room. Let's start lifting. Okay. So in doing that, most effective ways to build muscle mass, I could not be happier with this. Lifting free weights like dumbbells. I could not be happier. I want fireworks for that one. I could not be happier for that one. That's fantastic. Using machines like you'd find in a gym. Totally great. I'll give you some hearts for that one. I love that one too. Using resistant bands. Yeah, resistant bands are great. I use them for warm-ups. Our clients use them for warm-ups. After that, it's time to put weight in hand. You can get some very you know, good results, and if it's all you have to use are bands, then that's fine. And, and yes, they're less intimidating to some people when they first start. That's fine. All fine. But should I get to pulleys and consistent weights and dumbbells and kettlebells if I can? Absolutely. Okay. You're going to have a much better return for your time invested. And then body weight exercises such as push-ups, squats, wall sits, or tricep dips. Now, with the exception of a body weight sit to stand to a height of a chair that is not challenging for you or is it, you know, appropriately challenging, push-ups, wall sits, tricep dips, all very, very difficult. Very difficult for someone who has never trained or that someone is severely deconditioned. Those are three of the hardest exercises to do. And you think, oh, it's just push-ups. I have you know, kids do them in gymnastics class. And tricep dips, I used to do those when I was young. Yeah, they're really hard to manipulate your body, especially when you're weak and maybe a little bit you know, overweight, carrying some more body fat, more adipose tissue. You don't have the muscle mass and your bones are rather weak. So why don't we start on those machines? Let's add some weight, add some weight, gradually build up over a couple of weeks. Then we can move into some free weights, build some more mass, get our body used to manipulating a load in space that's not guided by rods and 
you know, bar be- or bars that are that are attached to pivot points and such, which is all good stuff. If you just stick with machines your whole life, that's fine too. But free weights will give you some added benefits. Okay, then. You can get to a point where, all right, I could do some push-ups now. I've got muscle mass to help me do these push-ups, help me do dips, to help me wall sit longer, help me squat below parallel, etc. Body weight training is not, ideally, in my, my opinion, definitely not a place to start for people. Moving your body weight is extremely difficult, okay? And it, especially if you're going to do it correctly, it's very difficult. Um, starting with light weights, building up, basically selecting load that will be of a challenge but not do damage or hurt you. That's where we come into the definition between pain and discomfort. Discomfort, doing my reps, doing curls. Best thing for me, an example, okay? Give an example, doing curls. Man, I feel it's burning in my arms and my, my, my muscles. My skin feels a little bit tighter and it's swelling underneath there. That's called the pump. This is good. There's a whole bunch of blood being pumped into that bicep because you're recruiting the muscle to do work, work, work. So your body goes blood, 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 oxygenation. Let's get in there. Okay, this muscle is demanding of more blood because you keep doing these curls. So we throw blood in there. When you do that, it pulls blood from other places. So if you're doing a bicep curl or doing a tricep extension, the amount of blood that needs to go there to help with this pump, not, not a ton. But if I'm doing squats or if I'm doing bench press where I'm pulling bigger muscles, bigger, bigger muscles, more demand for blood, this is where people can start to get a little lightheaded. You know, they can start to do so. So just remember when you merge into this, merge into it slowly and steady and get good lifts and take your time and allow yourself to feel discomfort in your muscles, burning sensation. Um, you might feel uh, like, oh, this is um, acidic, okay? That might be a sensation that you feel and that's okay. But if something hurts with every rep that you do, ow, my bicep, ow, my elbow, this thing keeps popping. Every time it pops, it hurts. That's damage. You're causing damage. Stop doing that. I want discomfort. We don't want pain. So as you're doing your lifts, and if you don't know how to do this, or if you're, you know, you're like, I want to do it, I just don't know where to start, hire somebody. One of the best things, you don't have to keep working with them. You could do a couple of sessions and get, you know, get a, a routine and learn the machines or learn a couple of free weight exercises and just, okay, I'm going to work on this for a month or two. And then, you know, I'll come back and we'll get a new one. That's great. There's nothing wrong with that. Or if you feel like, Hey, this was a good investment. I want to keep meeting with this person. I can get new challenges every day, consistency, you know, then, then do that. That's a great way too. Okay. Trials on this have shown that frail people over the age of 75 can make significant gains in muscle mass and strength by doing progressive resistance training at least twice a week. The improvements can be in as little as eight weeks. One seminal study, remember the Washington Post, we talked about this at the end of last year, included 10 frail, institutionalized, 86 to 96 year olds who did a high intensity progressive resistance training program, HIRT, high intensity resistance training, H-I-R-T, HIRT, high intensity resistance training. After just eight weeks, the average mid-thigh muscle area had increased by almost 10%, which is equivalent to the amount of muscle typically lost over that decade. And their leg strength increased by just 180%. In other words, these people were almost three times stronger at the end of a short training program than before. In the grand scheme of life for a 86 to 96 year old, right? Eight weeks is not much. Not much at all. Eight weeks, two months is not much at all. Uh, Let's go 90. Let's take on average 90 times 12 months. uh, That's 1,080 months that that person's been alive. And we're going to minus two (laughs) out of that. So out of 1,078 months that they have had, we're going to commit two of those months to doing some resistance training. And the resistance training that they're doing in there is not, you know, this hour or 90 minute long resistance plan. They have to do five days a week, twice a week, took about 20 minutes for them to go through it. Okay. Uh, it really can be done. This British Swiss man named Charles, you just, you just, you is the E, you just, E, <laughs> Anyhow, oh, he passed away in 2017. Damn it. 
I was hoping he'd still be alive. For example, took up progressive resistance training in his late 80s after noticing a decline in his muscle mass. He went on to become a bodybuilder. There you go. And in 2012, gave a TED Talk titled, Why Bodybuilding at Age 93 is a Great Idea. This is very cool. This is not him, by the way, the picture of this guy. That's not him because I looked him up. Um, I didn't see that he had, uh, had passed, so excuse me for that. One of my doctors um, has told me that I need to lose weight. Great. You have diabetes. You have cardiovascular disease. Lifting weights is a great way to assist both of those things in improving. So, oh, I'm going to gain huge amounts of muscle mass. I'm going to get heavier, doc, if I start lifting weights. No, you're not. You might, number one, start to gain a little bit of, of, of weight. Let's say you weigh 135 pounds. 100, well, they said you're overweight. Let's say you're 155 pounds, okay? And uh, you're like, well, okay, I got to start lifting weights. I got to get stronger. And all of a sudden, you're 158 pounds now. You put on three pounds. Is this something to be concerned about? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. You could go up to 160. I wouldn't be concerned, okay? Your body is going to respond by going, wow, this this dying plant of a body that you have has now been watered. What do you think is going to happen to that plant? It's going to start to grow. Okay. It's going to start to grow. And at some point, as with any other plant that you've ever had in your house or whatnot, you can water. I grew up, my mom had plants everywhere in our house. If you just keep watering plants, they, they don't just keep growing forever. Some, some do, but not all, most of them get to a certain size and they're like, this is as big as I get. I'm a four foot plant. I'm a 10 foot plant. I'm a six inch plant. That's their max potential. And then they stay there. You continue to water them, they stay there. Muscles in this are kind of the same. If you just continue to deliver like a good consistent challenge and resistance training, they, they'll build to a certain size. Now, if you supplement and you start to eat more calories and you really increase your protein and you challenge yourself really hard, can you start to bulk up and build like massive amounts of muscle and become a bodybuilder? Yeah. Is that what I'm asking you to do? No. We're just asking you to get your muscles challenged and trained and you'll look like a normal person still. You'll just have, and not that having muscles isn't normal. My point is, is you're not going to look like, holy crap, what happened to Barbara? You know, eight weeks ago, she started the resistance training program. Look, her neck is gone and all of her shirts, they don't fit anymore. All the seams are bursting apart and look at all the veins and she's so angry. And that's not going to happen. You're not going to become the Hulk in, in two months. Okay. What's going to happen is you're going to feel great. Your muscles are going to start feeling stronger. You're probably going to gain a lot in confidence. You're going to sleep really good. Your body's going to start moving better. You're going to feel capable, able to do more things. Probably increase your social life a little bit too. Brings a great amount of confidence to your body. Being physically strong brings confidence in all kinds of different areas of your life. Because you're capable and able and you can go and do things. Because your body's not weak as shit and just sitting around doing nothing. Okay, so get in there, start lifting. You gain a little bit of weight, water the plant a little bit, that's fine. As you start to reduce caloric uh, intake, meaning put into a little caloric deficit every day, if you need 2,000 calories to stay alive every day and to stay at 155 pounds, and you start to work out every day and burn 300 calories, you're now at 1,700 calories for your day. So you didn't really actually change any of your eating. You eat 2,000, and every day you do 2,000, your body stays the same. Well, if I exercise and I burn 300 calories, I'm now in a deficit. Every day I'm minus 300 calories. If I do that for 10 days, it'll give you about 3,000 calories of burn, which anywhere between three and 4,000 calories is about a pound of body fat. So after 30 days, you'll be down three pounds, maybe four pounds. You think, well, that's not a whole lot, Rob. Well, how many years did it take you to add all that body fat? I see people that, you know, on average will put on between 8 to 12 pounds in a year. That's about a pound a month. So if we're taking off three or four a month, that's pretty damn good. I think that's great. Okay. I think you're making big gains then. So be patient. Stick to the process. Keep at it. After two months of your eight-week training program, you're minus, I don't know, six to 10 pounds in body fat, you're going to look fantastic. And on the scale, it's probably only going to change about five, maybe six pounds. Wait, wait, you said we just lost 10. Yeah, but remember, you watered the plant a little bit. You're actually growing some muscle mass. So that's cool. If we gain three pounds in muscle mass, lose seven, excuse me, lose 10 pounds of body fat, 
then we have a seven pound change on the scale. But really what you did was you added three pounds of muscle mass, awesome. You lost 10 pounds of body fat, awesome. You are now seven pounds overall lighter, doctor's happy, hey, you're lighter, but you're more capable, you're more dense body-wise. So if you do take a stumble or fall, instead of fracturing your hip, you just bruise your butt cheek, right? Or your hip or whatever you land on. We just bruise and then we don't break. And that is the value in increasing bone density, increasing muscle mass. Even our clients who have been lifting for years with us and that, they fall. And the, unfortunately, I had the opportunity to watch a video of one of my clients falling. And it was a really, I mean, really bad fall. And the fact that she just cracked a bone and didn't blow it apart, I think is a, a huge testament to the amount of work that she had put in and built her muscles and her body stronger around it. And so even if you do experience some injury or some break, the chances of it being so much worse, they are much greater had you not put in all the work that you put in. And now when you have to rehabilitate, let's say you break your leg, okay? Let's say you fall and break your leg. You're gonna have to manipulate your entire body with your arms now. Crutches, up and down out of chairs, this and that. You, you're minus a leg, you're minus at least 25% of, of your body's ability to manipulate, move around. I mean, we walk on our legs, so you're minus 50% of it, really, right? Now we gotta rely on our arms. Well, all that upper body strength that you've been doing and building and working on, it's gonna come in very handy, okay? All right, uh, so we talked about our weight loss. Um, protein, protein's a big one, aging bodies. You'll see studies anywhere from 0.5 to two and a half, okay? Meaning, how many grams of protein do you need every day? Let's say you weigh, uh, let's stick with our 155. So that's um, 60, let's see, 70 kilos. Let's just go with 70 kilos, okay? What's 70 kilos? Let me go 70 times 2.2. 70 kilos is 154, there you go, okay? 70 kilos, by your body weight in kilos, basically however heavy that is, 70 in this case, um, that's how many grams of protein you need a day on average, 70. So if I break up 70 divided by, oh, I'm going to eat four times a day, I need about 17 or 18 grams of protein in each meal. Now you can supplement this. You can use some, you know, some protein uh, supplement, uh, the, you know, whey protein or vegan protein or soy protein, whatever you want, whatever you want. Getting some soy or getting some, some supplementation of protein is fine. Can you get it naturally through your meats and the other food? Absolutely. That's probably best, but make sure you're getting a good amount of protein daily. Now, does it need to be one gram? It could be less. I've seen 0. 0.5 to 0. 0.8, which would mean you know, 55 grams for somebody that's 70 kilos, that'd be fine too. I think getting a little bit more protein as we age is probably better. I'd rather you overshoot this than undershoot it, okay? So protein's a big one, especially with the aging body, especially if you're going to be training, that protein's gonna directly have some pretty good effects on your bone density and the muscle mass development. You gotta get enough protein in. You've gotta get enough protein, and I can't stress that enough. Aim for twice a week, if not more. As they talk about here, the benefits are great. Okay, um, resistance training at home, outdoors, whatever it takes, get that done. Uh, can you progress up to more than twice a week? Sure, three, maybe even four times a week would be fine. And then try to target at least eight to 10 muscle groups. Start out with about 30 to 40% of your maximum effort and progress to 70, 80% of your maximum effort. Absolutely correct. That I couldn't have said it better. 70 to 80% is right where we want to be. You're going to build good muscle mass. The opportunity to stress and hurt yourself because you're working at 100% is not there, but it's not so low that you're underloading, right? We don't want to work with underloads, meaning like it's not hard enough. We've got to get that discomfort, that burn, that sensation that we talked about earlier. That is how you progressively overload and continue to get stronger and stronger and stronger. It is never too late to start training for your fight against sarcopenia and the loss of independence in older age. The health benefits will be worth it, as Socrates said in the 14th century BC. He had a little quote, uh, I think. Did I not get it on there? I don't think I did. <clears throat> I love that they put on there, and that's our, our you know, slogan. Join me in our fight against sarcopenia, right? Continue to fight your good fight against sarcopenia. This is a battle. This is a continued battle against the 
deterioration, the degeneration of your muscle mass. And because the muscle mass is starting to weaken the bone density and the ligament and tendon attachments of the joint and the muscles to those joints are all starting to deteriorate as well. As all of that starts to shrink and get smaller, you start to shrink and get smaller. Your opportunities for injury get greater. Your risk for the loss of your independence is much higher and your opportunities for an increased mortality risk go through the roof. I'll end with this. Your risk for mortality increases by 150, excuse me, 250% if you are a weak individual versus strong. And the criteria for that is not very high. We've talked about this in the past. You got to pick up about 20 pounds, 18 pounds, officially not eight kilos off the ground. Be able to pick that up, set it down at least twice. You'll be considered strong. Okay, so it's not a huge criteria. However, you can see the risk reward to, or the, the risk behind being weak, that increased mortality by 250%. That means you're going to die at an early age. You're going to die compared to your, your peers and the average person your age and your sex and your height and your everything else. That average person lives to this certain age. Well, you have a 250% increased risk of dying earlier than that because your body's so weak. Two to three days a week, 20 to 25 minutes, put some time into this, drastically increases your chance of living longer, improving your quality of life, maintaining your independence, improving your posture, everything else we've talked about from social interactions and capabilities and vacations and all this, just to the daily acts of feeling strong and independent and capable of doing everything on your own. Just because you're getting older doesn't mean you have to accept that you're going to become frail, that you're going to become an injury risk, that you're going to have this miserable degeneration of life and skill to the point where you slowly wither away into nothingness. I would rather you be strong and vibrant and independent and at 98 years old or 103 years old, heart attack dead. <laughs> and I don't mean to be too morbid by talking about that, but that's the way I hope everybody goes with a very small window at the end of their life where they are ill or sick. I hope you're just good, 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 good lights out. I don't want to see anybody suffer and watch them spend months, if not years of their life laying in bed, shrinking away, shrinking away. Unfortunately, my adopted grandpa, Keegan's grandpa, we watched that happen to him for months. And then with my dad, my dad had a heart attack and three hours later was gone. My dad was teasing the paramedics, bringing him into the hospital after he had the heart attack. He was still cognitively and capably aware enough to have fun and tease people and was still driving and was still, he, the heart attack he had before that, he drove himself to the hospital afterwards. Granted, it was a quarter mile away, but he still did. He was completely independent. And about three years prior to that, he was not. He built himself out of the loss of his independence. He built himself out of that with resistance training one day a week with me for an hour. Imagine if you do 20 to 30 minutes every other day, how great and how far you can come. You'd be shocked. And I hope you do it. My dad, by the way, was 75 when we started a resistance train together and passed away a couple of months before his 78th birthday. And those two years that we had, two plus years we had together, were the best two years. And I had a whole life with my dad that was fantastic. 43 years of my life with him, all great. But those last two years were really special. And to watch him build back, he is the energy and the life force behind what I do. Because if I can do that with him, then I hope you can do that with your loved ones, with the people around you, the people that you value and love the most, all you coaches, and then all you individual folks out there who Maybe just looking for some motivation. If my non-athletic 
non-resistance training father can start this and within two years goes from wheelchair and walker dependency at 330 pounds and can get down to 180 and live in a really high quality of life, you can too. All right, team. Check that article out. I will put the link in the comment section down below. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to, uh, to um, put those down below as well. Happy to answer. And I hope that if there's anybody in your circle, your group that needs to hear this, I know it's 30 minutes long, but we need information. We need people to be armed with this and they need examples and they need strategies and steps for success. And that's why we continue to do videos like this to make sure people hear this message and they know what to do. So if they need to hear it, please send it their way. I appreciate it. Please subscribe, ring that bell. Don't miss anything we put up. And as always, please continue to fight your good fight against Sargopenia. Take care. Quick update here, gang. I found the uh, author, actually, to the article. I realized that in my editing, I just chopped it out. David Scott and Robin Daly are the two uh, from Deccan University are the ones that wrote this. And I found that quote at the very end uh, that um, Socrates said in the fourth fourth century BC is not the bodily habit spoiled by the rest of idleness but preserved for a long time by motion and exercise so there you go a great uh, Socrates the great Socrates has said on there don't let your body spoil get up move exercise be vibrant be strong be capable be able and maintain it that's everything just said right there in that all right hope you enjoyed this and uh, we'll see you in the next one take care